imitate of the old days, Greg. When I try to imitate, I instantly think of Derek Jermaine hot tub parties. <laughs> <laughs> I think of the old office, the first office that I walked into, I think of all of the same deep young men. And here we are today, just one of those teams has a room of a thousand people, not just the west side of the team. So grateful to be here. So my outcome for today is I'm gonna just gonna tell you a bit about my story, and then I have 10 winning principles. 10 winning principles that I think are absolutely must if you want to learn this business. This business is 80% mindset and it's 20% skill set. You can only get so good at this business. 99% of the people that I see fail on my team fail because they lack the mindset needed to get through it. That's just the truth. So we're going to talk about that today. But my journey started at 23 years old. Is there anybody in the room in their 20s? Okay, okay. Is there anybody in the room in their 20s? Oh, it's the same 50 people. All right. <laughs> they're, they're millennials. They're on their phones. They're probably Snapchatting right now. It's like, <laughs> like the last year of it, so I think I count. Um, 19 years ago, I'm sitting in a second cup on Jasper Avenue. You guys know what Jasper Avenue is? It's around here somewhere, right? And I'm sitting in second cup after a long shift at Earl's. I just put in a... 12 hour shift, I was making $11 an hour. So 12 times 11, Eggy, what's the math? Like 130 bucks. Big day. Big $130 day. Just enough to cover my AMA. And I'm sitting there, and a lady walked in the door. You ever have those moments where you look back and you can remember like the smell of something, the sound of something? You ever have those moments in your life you look back? I remember the way the door chime sounded when Susan walked in that door. And she walked in that door, she went to get a coffee, she turned, we made eye contact, and she sat down at my table. And I was sitting there drinking a coffee, literally contemplating the meaning of my life. And I thought to myself, listen, I just graduated from U of A, my parents want me to come take over the family business. They have 200 employees, they're building hospitals, hotels, big buildings. I have the opportunity to go in this family business, carry it on third generation. And then earlier that week, Earl's on, you have been at Earl's Tin Palace? Yeah. yeah, it was way better when I worked there. It's okay now. But, what I, but Earl's, Earl's offered me a general manager position. I was 23 years old, it was $105,000 a year. I would have been the youngest GM in the company. And I, had two, and I was thinking about which direction I wanted to go. And Susan Abraham walked in the door. Remember Susan? Yeah. And she sat down at my table and she said, hey, what are you looking for? We got talking about life. I said, I never want to hit a glass ceiling. I said, I have a severe chronic illness that, that plagues me every day. And I said, I want to get paid what I'm worth. She says, you know what? You should come check out this financial thing on Thursday. <laughs> you guys are so worried about saying the wrong thing to the right person. She said, it's some financial thing. <laughs> and I was so fired up. <laughs> I was like, please don't be a scam. <laughs> or if it is a scam, just like a little scam. Not like a big one. Like, you know, I don't want to go to jail, but I want to make a lot of money, right? <laughs> oh my God. So, so I'm like, I don't, what is it? She said, it, well, it's a financial thing. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not really good at math. She says, okay, we can teach, we can teach the business to a 15-year-old. And looking back, she should have said 12 year old because 15, I was like, that, what is that, grade nine math? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty tough. But, but she committed me to a, this Thursday presentation. It was January 12th, 2005, that I was prospecting. I came to a BPM on January 13th. And I drove across town, had no, no way of knowing what I was getting into. But I had a feeling. I had a feeling like I was just being guided. And I walked in, I'll never forget those doors. I walked into that office and that room was packed. That BPM night was packed. There was energy. And I remember one thing. I don't remember a word that anybody said that night, but I remember exactly how they made me feel. Anybody relate to that? And I knew in that moment, I said, man, if this thing checks out, I want to feel like this for the rest of my life. I came back the next day, I made a mistake. On the way home, as a 23 year old, you gotta run everything by your mom, right? <laughs> so I called my mom, like, mom, I found it. I don't think I'm gonna take over the, the, the family business that's been around <laughs> for 1958. I think I'm turning Earl's down. 
She's like, are you okay? <laughs> She's like, are you okay? Do you need something? Like, are you, are you being like loved or kidnapped? Like, do you need money? Like, what's happening right now? I said, no, I think I found it. She goes, okay, what's the name of the company? Let me Google it. <laughs> Not a good move. Not a good move. Scenario disaster times 10. So, but she's, she's trying to be supportive, so she, she sends me two pages of questions for Derek Tremaine. I have one question, right? What does it take to get started? Derek, uh, Derek answered two full pages of my questions the next day, my mom's questions. <laughs> I crumpled them up, I threw them in the garbage, I got coded, and I got into licensing. And I was ready, but nobody knows what's inside of you. See, nobody knew that I've been battling with my illness my entire life. And just like you're battling with something right now, you have a decision to make. Are you gonna let that fuel you? Or is that gonna be your excuse to lose and continue to lose? See, for me, I always was looking for an opportunity to win. I was diagnosed, you guys heard my story, but there's a lot of new people in the room. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was two years old. Man, every month we were in the hospital. Every month there was a procedure. Every month there were surgeries. I missed so many months of school every year. We moved around to try and find the best hospitals. At six, I just I stopped walking for about six months because my joints were so swollen. I was always a small kid. I was always on experimental drugs. I was on like 60 milligrams of prednisone for 14 years in a row. I just, I just, just, I just was hanging on. I was hanging on, hanging on, hanging on. Always a small kid. Got bullied a lot because of it. Back then, it was a, it was a, it was a real bad thing. I told this story at convention at 14, you guys, I was so sick that they weren't sure that I was gonna really make it to beyond adolescence. So I had to two feed myself every night, seven cans of boost and sure, just to get enough caloric intake because I was losing so much fluid during the day. See, everyone in this room has a battle. Some of you were raised in a broken home. Some of you have been maybe divorced a couple times. Maybe you lost a child. Maybe you were abused. So everybody in this room has something. For me, this was it. For me, this was it. So when I found World Finance Group, I saw this as an opportunity to leverage that. To leverage that. Not be a victim to it, but be like, finally I can take all the stuff that I've been through, all the challenges, all the quiet nights, all the tears, lonely road. Lack of health is a lonely road. Remember being five years old and, and, and you know on my hospital crib and you know back then parents couldn't stay. I remember my parents being like, okay, bye, Stephen. Eight o'clock at night, and I'm just like, uh, no parents gone. They, they see him again at 9 a.m. Just so many nights alone with my thoughts, just thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. But when I was 15 years old, I decided I wanted to get in the game. I decided I wanted to get a job. Why? Because I wanted to be in an environment and I wanted to start to take girls on dates. <laughs> and even though I looked like I was 10, I was, I was like, I had a little bit of swagger, right? Had a little bit of swagger. Nobody, nobody told me I was sick. I kind of just forgot I was sick. And I kind of had some swagger. So I got off the bus, I, I, I got off the bus in grade eight, and I walked across, two stops early, I walked across the street in Calgary to a place called Earl's, you guys know it, and I went in there, and I applied to have a job, get a job as a dishwasher. And there's a whole story there, of, of a hilarious story. The girl's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm here to get a job. 19 year old, pretty girl, giant, because I'm this tall. She says, what do you, the job to do what? I said, I'm just here to get a job. Is there a manager? She's like, all right, sit at the bar. So I sat at the bar, right? All of a sudden, two minutes later, behind, behind the wall, I saw all these Guys, like, they're, just yeah. got, they're all like chatting about me. I'm ordering like diets, like sprites, and I'm just leaning back in my chair. I'm like, man, this is going to be a great environment for me. I just want to get in the game. They, my boss, my, my my buddy comes out, who is not my buddy, he comes out. Never met him. He says, uh, "Excuse me, sir. Like, what, what what are you what are you looking for?" I said, "I just want a job." He said, <laughs> I said, "I'm turning 15." He goes, "Honestly, I don't know if we have a job." He says, "What do you want to do? So anything." He said, all right, if you want a job here, I want you to come back tomorrow at the same time and impress me. And I was like, done. So I walk out of Earl's, my oversized backpack, and told the lounge girl, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I walked home the whole way 
going home, I'm thinking, what can I do? What can I do? And my boss and I, my buddy and I still talk about this moment. So I get home and I'm like, I got it. There's only one grade that I excelled at. It was home economics. And I had two projects that I got 97% of. I'd never seen a nine before a grade in my entire life, except home economics. <laughs> I had just made a pair of really sweet NFL boxers. And I just made a menu that I basically glued together with like, Looked like a four year old did. But I was so proud. So I get home, I put my brand new NFL boxers, unworn, in a little bag. And I put my menu in a bag and I zip it up. I put it in my backpack and I didn't sleep that night. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smoke this guy here too. <laughs> this guy has never seen anything like this his entire life. This is a true story. This is a true story. So I go to school, I get up the bus the next day, I go into the same mom's room. She's like, yeah, you're, she's like, you're back. I'm like, of course I'm back. I got a meeting. <laughs> she's like, where are you meeting? I'm like, Nas, just tell Nas this he's here. Right? Ten minutes later, Nas is like, he's poking his head. He's like, oh my God, this guy's back. He comes up. He, he, didn't even, he didn't even fully set his chair. And I pulled out my ziplock and I went, bam. <laughs> so he opens the thing up and he pulls out these box, I'm unworn, I haven't worn them yet. He's these boxers, he goes, what is this? I'm like, these are, I made these at home. These are boxers. I said, they have pockets. Okay, I'm so proud they have pockets. Little NFL helmets, I don't know if you guys made boxers. Yeah, you made them, right? You know what I'm talking about. It's a boxer project. I'm the same age as me. He goes, you can keep these. He's like, what's this? I'm like, I have to make a menu, like price the items and appetizers and Picture, and he's like, he's peeling through it, some of the pages are still stuck together, and the glue, and he's like, he's like, just hold on a second. So he, he, he puts, he puts the, he, he leaves the boxers with me, he puts the menu in the bag, and he goes to the back of the kitchen. Five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes later, I'm like, where's Nats? And all of a sudden, all the chef heads are poking around. Like, who the hell is this kid? He comes back and he goes, look, I, I've never seen it like before my whole life. He says, you can work in dish. $4.25 an hour. He says, the only thing is we need someone from 6 p.m. to close. So I got a job. I was closing dish six nights a week at the end of grade eight. And that's how I got started at Earl's. And I just wanted to be in the game. 